recording. I'm going to starting the recording, and I'm doing the recording from uh, from the OBS software, so it will be smooth. It won't be choppy like the GoToMeeting is. All right. So it's going to. I believe it tells you to start with Vine charcoal. Vine charcoal is awful. People hate it. I don't like it much either, but it's a necessary evil. Besides the fact that when the apocalypse comes and technology is completely destroyed, you can burn your own sticks to make a drawing tool. <laughs> you can still make art. <laughs> okay. That's that's. I always have a positive spin on everything. You know, you got to have a positive spin. But, yeah. So you set up your object. You know, you can draw on a rock with a burnt stick. I mean, you know, it's fine. Um, <laughs> so you can you can use the vine charcoal as a measuring tool. Vine charcoal tends to be fragile and it breaks. There's really three kinds of charcoal that that I keep on hand. I you like to I like to use. That's okay. The recording will will be better, and I'll post that right away. So um, General's Charcoal, oh, this is a 4B. I don't know how that got in there. I have 4Bs are great, but I don't draw with 4Bs. I like to draw with 6Bs, with 6Bs that have a point. So keep a few sharp pencils on hand. Um, this is my favorite charcoal drawing tool, the 6B. This is vine charcoal, which is traditional. And there's also the compressed charcoal. So you'll have all three of these kinds of charcoal when you um, can draw. And in the beginning, you want to start with the vine charcoal because you should try it all. Some people really like it. But I'll use the pencil for, or maybe if it says to do it in pencil, that's okay. Do it in pencil, whatever it says. I can't remember exactly. The technique is still the same. The principles are still the same. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to look at your still life. And I strongly recommend, and it doesn't say this in the classroom, but this is my own, this is, this is the way that I was taught. I strongly recommend getting a viewfinder. Now, I make my own viewfinder out of old mat board, just two L-shaped pieces of mat board. This way, you can look at your still life and frame it up. I'm just going to focus on the ball and the um, metal cup and the box that the ball is in. And you square it up to your eyes. You just look at it through the viewfinder until so you've got it squared up. So it would be essentially the same what, what you're going to be seeing or what I'm going to be seeing is essentially the same as what's in the photograph, but close up. So, like, we're going to frame this out into, so we're not seeing, I'm not seeing this part here, the, the top of the picture. I'm just barely seeing the top of the picture, but mostly I'm trying to compose my still life in a square. I like drawing things in squares. It's just something that I do, but you could make it long, you could make it wide whatever your paper is. So I want to make sure it fits within this uh, here. So this might, that's what I'm viewfinding, OK? It's important to see the, the composition, because as you, as you, uh, you know, it's little kids, little kids fill up the whole page all the time. They see the whole thing. They see the gestalt. And as you get older, you start to draw specific things and you lose that sensibility of, of, the, of the whole, of the gestalt. So once you can see the whole thing and you look through your viewfinder, I can say to myself, this is really helpful for sizing things because people run off the page or whatever. I can size it up and see that, okay, the way that I've got it framed, the box takes up about three quarters of the vertical space. And I've got, you know, maybe an eighth on either side, what might look like an inch on either side. So knowing that, I can just rough in, and you want to just, just rough in your, your object a little bit at an angle. Don't try to be too specific with it. Just rough it in. OK, so this is how you develop your eye for being able to see, see the it's hard to talk and draw at the same time, so bear with me. Um, to see the relationships of shapes to each other, that all, all, it's all going to help you when, when, no matter what you draw. When you draw a face, you can draw an eye perfectly and a nose perfectly and a mouth perfectly, but if they're not the right size and they're not in the right relationship to each other, it's not going to look like the person. So it's 
it's really important to see the whole thing as as a composition and get the objects inside the composition in relationship to each other. So I this looks just looking at it I can tell this is already a little too big. So I'm gonna that's nice about the bind charcoal is you just rub it off like that. And there's no erasing involved. It's a quick sketch tool. That's that's the main reason to use it. So like if you really want to save paper and you're doing like 30 gesture drawings of a person that for 30 second poses, you can just wipe the whole thing off like this, you know, and then draw over it again. So you can use the same piece of paper over and over again. If you find that you make something that you really like, well, then you can save it. So let me get that thing back in here. So I just sketch in the box. And what's kind of nice about doing it on within the paper is that I decide if I decide I need to go a bit bigger, I can widen out my con my uh, blah 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 blah. Let me just get this sorted. So one of the things that I do automatically because I've been drawing for so long is I triangulate. That we'll talk about that later on. But when I'm laying out this box, I'm also looking to see I take an, a visual line up. And I can see that the edge of this sugar bowl is right above the corner of this box. You can see that in the photograph, right? Um, it isn't so you can't see it so well on the live cam, but that's what I'm seeing over over the top of my drawing board. And the handle of this cup goes just a bit past the edge of the box here. And the edge I'm always looking for these points of reference is triangulation. The other thing that you can do is for is to put your pencil or drawing material on a, the angle that you see and pull it down to your drawing. So my angle is too sharp. So I need to angle that down a little bit. It's amazing how far off your brain will make you draw something when it doesn't really understand what's there. This is a lot more sharp. So this yeah, that helps you get those angles in there. So once you do that, and this is so this is for milestone one, so I want to be specific to milestone one. I am going to I almost always have a ping pong ball, or it's actually a wooden ball painted white, or a cue ball from a, a pool table. Those are the three balls that I like to use because they're all smooth and they're all white. And they're perfectly round, and balls are always, you know, the same distance height. You know, no matter which direction you measure them, they're going to be in the same distance, and they'll never be out of out of uh, proportion. So once I've got that gesture laid in, which is how you're going to start every single drawing from now on to the end of time, was with a gesture sketch like this. And gesture sketch meaning a gestural drawing of what you're seeing. Not that it's not realistic. It is what I'm seeing, but I'm drawing it quickly. And that helps me to bang, 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 bang. You know, I'm just looking, 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 and drawing really quickly. Get the like the first impression down. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to check my measurements. So I need to figure out what I'm going to use as a base unit of measure. And I almost always use the ball because it's consistent always. So you hold your arm out flat, straight. You lock your elbow. It's very important. Every time you do this, you must lock your elbow. Close one eye to get rid of your binocular vision. You put the tip of the pencil at the top of the object you're measuring and your thumbnail at the bottom of the object. So I'm gonna do this in the camera so you can see what I'm seeing. I'm holding it out and I put the tip of the pencil at the top of the ball and my thumbnail at the bottom. That's one base unit of measure. I'm gonna take that base unit of measure and I'm going to measure up, see how many balls I have to measure up. There's one ball and there is a half a ball. I turn my pencil sideways and make sure you keep it horizontal, you know, 90 degrees to your face, to your eyes. And like I'm trying to keep it 90 degrees to the camera. So I've got that one ball measurement and I'm going to measure from the edge of the box here. It's hard to hold it still to here. So that's two balls across. And that from, if I measure from the bottom of the box, it's going to be just shy of the top of the ball. And like one, two and three quarters. Okay, so now I've got this. Now this, that's that measurement. The, that's the measurement on the still life. It's just a unit. It's like an inch or it could be an inch or it could be a mile, it could be a centimeter, it could be 
a, a hand's width. It doesn't really matter. And I take my, it's just a reference point exactly. So now I've got my reference point of my sphere on my drawing that I've already sketched out. I'm going to take one of those, and it was one, one more above it, came to the middle of the, of the sugar bowl, and then there was a half, right? So one and a half above the ball. And then when I measured it from here, I got the one, actually one ball went to the place where the shadow comes in. So I'm always looking for places to line things up with. And then it was two, and then it was three, about three quarters. So I got it. I nailed it. I've been drawing today, so I'm already warmed up. And, the, and it's really amazing how much a little bit of warm up will do to help you see things more accurately. Um, and to draw things more accurately. It's like when I first start drawing, it looks like crap. And then when I keep drawing, the more I draw, the better it gets. So I'm going to take that one, one unit measure again, and I'm going to measure, should be two across, remember, from the edge to the edge. So I'm going to measure, that's one, two. A little bit far. So I'm going to tuck that in just a bit. And maybe it's this one here that needs to be moved over. So by taking more measurements, I can narrow down and correct my drawing so that it is accurate in itself. So base unit of measure. The, then when you, for the, for the milestone, what you want to do is say, okay, here's my one base unit of measure, one bum. And from here to here was one and a half bums. And from here to here was two base units, okay? So as many, and I never ever measure it this way on an angle. I'll always measure it as if I have a grid in front of my face. So let me measure the, I'm gonna measure the ball and see, well see my, the measurement from my hand to the measurement on the object, it's actually three units. So it'll be different depending on where your hand is. So you have to be really super diligent about always keeping, yeah, actually, my, I was right the first time because from the camera, it's a slightly different angle than what I'm seeing. It's actually um, measuring my the ball this way from my own viewpoint, not from the camera's viewpoint. I get one, two, and a half across. So I was actually right the first time. I get one two and a half. So yeah, my original line was that more accurate out here because it's based on your point of view, right? So you have to remember to always measure from your point of view, not from a camera, not from a photograph, but from your point of view. So when you set up your OBS software, this goes for anybody who's watching the video, you set up your OBS software and you get your cell phone set up as a, as a um, another, you see, another way to see. This is really important because now I can turn on my camera, my cell phone camera, and you can show me, you can sit there and show me exactly what you're seeing and exactly what you're drawing. And I can see, oh, I understand why your thing doesn't, isn't quite lining up. And I can help you with that. So that's really important. Okay. Um, Anything else I need to mention about this? You might want to, as many things as you can measure with that base unit, and also I highly, rec strongly, strongly recommend, let me measure the silver picture. It's one, two, and an eighth. You want to avoid fractions if you can, because the fractions are never going to be as accurate as the holes, right? So, yeah, so this is a little bit too big here pull this in a little bit. And I can also see, I like to see where tangents are. So like the edge of this line on the box meets up with the bottom of this thing here. Another thing, and this we'll get more into this later, this is actually sitting at an angle, so its, it's handles are slightly cocked. But the circle, the oval, is going to be exactly oval. And to check it, you can turn it upside down from your point of view. This is where a lot of people get, it gets funky because the lines start to tilt 
so you can straighten up your lines and you can straighten out like this this is going to be even though the candles are going at an angle because it's turned this is going to be straight across because it's sitting on a level surface so you can fix those things that are not symmetrical when they should be you can fix your your sphere if it's not symmetrical by turning it upside down lots of times we draw things like this thinking that it whoops can't see that we draw this thinking that it's round and when you turn it upside down or flip it left to right you'll see that it's totally sideways that it's actually bending quite badly so anything you can think of to measure definitely do it so like one here to here was two and a quarter and you want to start with an object that's small enough that you can fit it within the other objects not with the biggest object on there and then having to cut down in fractions that's just going to make you crazy so any questions yeah right I, me I measure the angle of the angle by holding it up in front of my eyes like if I put it in front of the camera I put my pencil like this to the angle of the box and then I pull that that angle down to my paper to see if the angle on my paper is close to the angle that I'm seeing so you can you actually would hold it up like this and then just drop it to here to see and I'm still making my angle a little too sharp but when I do my base unit of measure I don't measure on the angle I measure on the grid I just think it's more accurate that way right you want to make sure your pencil is is perfectly vertical to your eye like when you hold it up it should it shouldn't be tilted this way and it shouldn't be tilted this way it should be perfectly vertical to your eye you've got to close one eye because that binocular the binocular vision will screw it up you put the tip of your pencil at the top of one of the object and your thumbnail at the bottom and then keeping your arms straight you want to measure down the object and then you want to turn it and keep it perfectly vertical and measure across keeping those measurements down and then you put those into uh, I've sent things turned into two and a half. I forget now what it was. Uh, yeah. That's okay. On, on the recording that I post in the classroom, no one will be able to hear you. <laughs> They'll only be able to hear me. So, because I'm I'm recording through OBS and not through GoToMeeting. GoToMeeting is very choppy and um, delayed it's really frustrating but the OBS software makes a really nice uh, nice recording so I will convert this and post this in the classroom and if anyone needs a, a go over of this again tomorrow Saturday I'm available I'm going to be working on stuff all day um, remember to measure those angles of your still life setup because if you took perspective drawing which I don't know if people take it before or after this class but remember that when you know okay so okay okay well basics of perspective drawing almost everything that you're going to ever encounter is going to be two-point perspective and that's the horizon line and two vanishing points the leading like the leading edge of this box this is a two-point perspective the box is here and then if you take it to the vanishing point which is way over there because you know our eyes are seeing something different than what we're drawing but you can fake out the perspective no matter what if lines that are parallel that are moving away from you will look as if they converge that's just the way it works it's science optically speaking lines that are parallel to each other moving away from you as these are moving away from me and these are moving away from me are going to converge on a vanishing point so eventually yeah 
so that you're, you never want to have your drawings go like this. And I see that all the time. People drawing the, the back end of the box like that. That doesn't work. That doesn't exist. It, it would be a trapezoid. It, they're going to converge. So check it. And you can measure, like you can measure the front end of the box and as a whole unit. You can measure anything with anything inside of itself, right? So you can actually measure the front end of the box and then move your pencil over to the left and see, you'll see that the back end of the box is shorter. You know it's not shorter in your head, but it is shorter optically. So you want to make sure that you're getting that. You can do that measurement too. You don't have to mark that, but that's something that you can do for yourself. So just say, okay, well, I know that this box, this line has got to be bigger, longer than this line. And it is, not by much, but it is, a little bit. Okay. I'm going to stop the recording, so...